So I was recently discussing some networking concepts with a client of mine, and the topic of mesh Wi-Fi came up. And as I was explaining how mesh Wi-Fi worked to my client, I realized that this would be a pretty good topic to make a video on, as it can be kind of confusing, especially considering the differences between mesh Wi-Fi in the home and mesh Wi-Fi in a business environment. So in today's video, we're going to discuss what mesh Wi-Fi is, how it works, and how you can apply it in both the home and business environment. So let's head over to the computer and take a look. Before we get into the Wi-Fi component, let's take a look at the definition of a mesh network to gain a better understanding. So a mesh network is a local area network topology in which the infrastructure nodes connect directly, dynamically, and non-hierarchically to as many other nodes as possible and cooperate with one another to efficiently route data to and from clients. Now, what does this mean? That's a lot of words. This essentially means that your network nodes or network devices can communicate directly with one another. They don't need to make a big loop around the network. They don't need to rely on some other device uh, to communicate back and forth. They can just communicate directly with one another. So then what is mesh Wi-Fi? Well, in practice, mesh Wi-Fi is a series of wireless access points that connect directly to each other wirelessly to provide fast and effective Wi-Fi coverage over a large area. So if we look at this graph we have on the right-hand side, we see we have an example of a basic home mesh system. We have three wireless access points in the house who are all able to communicate with one another directly. And because they can do that, they are able to create a seamless Wi-Fi signal that covers the entire house or most of the house, certainly much more uh, than you would be able to cover with just one of these access points. So then, what's the difference between mesh Wi-Fi and just adding some Wi-Fi repeaters to your existing Wi-Fi network? Well, with Wi-Fi repeaters, you get no communication between the wireless access points other than passing standard network traffic through. So your main access point isn't actually aware of what your Wi-Fi repeater is doing. It has no idea how to talk to that device. All it sees it as is another device on the network. So each of your access points or repeaters is going to operate independently of the others. They're not a part of the same system. They don't know how to communicate. And because of that, they'll have to be configured individually. With a mesh Wi-Fi system, you have direct communication between the wireless access points regarding not only your standard network traffic passing back and forth, but also what devices are connected to them and any configurations or settings you might set up. So all the access points are going to work together to provide that seamless Wi-Fi coverage. To do this, they have to be of the same brand or system. You can't mix and match um, mesh Wi-Fi because the devices would not know how to communicate with each other. If you do that, you're essentially just setting up expensive Wi-Fi repeaters. So the benefits of mesh Wi-Fi, there are quite a few of them. For one, you get an easy setup, especially in the home environment. They're generally done with mobile app setup, so you'll download a mobile app to your phone from the manufacturer of the system, and it'll use Bluetooth to talk to all of your devices and then connect them up all together into your mesh system. Pretty easy setup. It's pretty cool, too. Um, in the business and enterprise environment, you're generally going to see more of a web-based setup, so you'll log into a local website hosted by um, a controller, which we'll talk about later, or one of the mesh devices. Um, that being said, some of the business or enterprise class equipment also has mobile app companions that you can use to set them up. One interface to rule them all. Uh, you get one-click configuration with a mesh Wi-Fi system, meaning that you can apply policies and settings all from one place, and it'll automatically propagate to all of your different wireless access points. It's also ease of administration. You can more effectively monitor devices' performance, what kind of data they are sending back and forth, um, and you can see which access point they're connected to, stuff like that. You get better AP placement. Obviously, if you're not bound by wires, you can put access points in more creative places, and you can expand your Wi-Fi coverage past what you would be able to do if you were only using wired access points. Worth keeping in mind, you still have to power the access points. You don't have to run Ethernet, but you have to plug them in somehow. You get better network performance. With a mesh Wi-Fi system, you'll get more consistent speeds. You'll get better roaming performance. That's devices hopping from one AP uh, to another. 
and you're less susceptible to outages because one AP going down doesn't necessarily take down the whole system. And this is compared to using repeaters. I'll talk about why I specified that a little bit later. Um, finally, I have enhanced Wi-Fi coverage. We kind of talked about this with the better AP placement, um, but you get better and more efficient Wi-Fi coverage for large homes, office buildings, and outdoor areas. So let's look at some examples. The first example we'll take is the home networking option. So in a home networking mesh Wi-Fi system, you'll generally have a main router acting as a base station, a network controller, and an uplink access point. So let's go through that. Um, the main router. So it'll replace the router you probably already have in your home. Acting as the base station, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is it is going to be the center for the entire mesh networking system. It will have control over the whole system. Network controller, same idea. Any settings that you apply, um, it's the job of the network controller to propagate that out to the uh, different access points um, in your mesh Wi-Fi system. In this case, that main router base station is going to be the network controller. It's also going to act as the uplink access point. What I mean by that is that the router base station network controller will have a built-in Wi-Fi access point, and that will be the final destination for all your traffic. So all of your access points or your mesh points will eventually feed the data back to the main base station's access point. Now, you'll add additional access points around your house, and those are deployed by simply plugging them into power and either using the mobile app or the web interface to join them to the system. These are often referred to as additional routers or mesh points. We'll discuss the terminology a little bit later because it can get kind of confusing. Um, and in general, these are very, very user-friendly to set up. Like I said, mobile app-based for home users. Very easy to set up. You don't need networking experience to get them going. So here's an example of one you might deploy in a home. It's Ubiquiti's Amplify HD system. So here is our router, base station, network controller, uplink access point, all those fancy terms I laid out before. Basically, the center for the system will be this box here. It will provide your routing. It will connect to your modem. It will replace your router that you currently have in your home. It's also going to act as the main access point or that uplink access point. You're then going to deploy these little guys around the house to extend coverage. So you can see in this example here, we have our router base station giving off its main Wi-Fi signal here. And we have our mesh points added throughout the house to expand that coverage. And they're going to uplink back to here. Now, before I talked about how one access point going down won't destroy the whole network. Uh, with some systems, like the Amplify HD system, let's say you had four of these throughout the house, right? Let's say you had another one of these little mesh points up here. If this went down, that mesh point would then mesh here, maybe instead of back to here. Or maybe if the signal was better, it would mesh to another mesh point that's sitting over here. So it's not going to destroy your network if one of these uh, mesh points goes down or you need to unplug one or reset one or something like that. Here is another example of a home networking one. Again, it's from Ubiquiti. It's their Amplify Alien system. And I chose this one very specifically because it shows some of the problems with terminology and marketing. So if we look at the Amplify Alien router here, um, that's what this is right here. Here's your main router, your base station, network controller, all that fun stuff. And then here's the mesh point. Makes sense, right? Your main router, here's the mesh point you add. In this example, we probably have the main router here, and then a mesh point there, and a mesh point there. Now you get Wi-Fi coverage for the whole building here. Makes total sense. But then you see this. You can buy the router itself. You can buy the router and a mesh point, all making sense so far. Or you can have two Amplify Alien routers and one mesh point. This is bad marketing as far as I'm concerned, and I do not like that Ubiquiti states it like this. But essentially what's happening here is if you buy this pack right here, you get the two routers and the mesh point, you're still only going to be using one router. So for example, you'll use this device here as the main router. This second router is just going to be set up as an additional mesh point. The system is smart enough to know that you don't need two routers running in the system, right? So once you try to add the second router in, it's automatically going to help you set it up as a mesh point. So in practice, this pack right here is a router and two mesh points. I can't express how <laughs> bothered I am by the marketing here. 
but you'll see this with a lot of mesh systems as they use these terms that they think people know. Like people generally know the term router, so they probably think that by marketing it that way, it'll make people more comfortable. Um, but it can also confuse people. So in this case, you're getting a router and then two mesh points. Just be aware of the terminology when you're shopping. And if one system is too confusing and you don't understand it, don't buy it. Look for another system or see if you can contact the company to get help. OK, so let's move on to the business or enterprise environment. The concept is exactly the same. It's just with dedicated devices. What do I mean by that? Well, in the previous example here, we looked at a box like this acting as your router, your base station, your network controller, and your uplink access point. You'll have all of that stuff in the business enterprise environment. They're just separated out into individual devices. So we'll have a dedicated hardware or software controller that is responsible simply for managing network devices and propagating out settings and configuration. In the Wi-Fi system, the Wi-Fi mesh system in this case could be completely separate from your other equipment. For example, your routers and switches may be of a completely different system, a completely different brand. But as long as your access points and your controller are of the same mesh system, that'll work out just fine. And in the business and enterprise environment, one or more APs will be wired to act as that backbone, that uplink access point, or the base station that we kind of talked about before. Remember, this is no longer built into the router or the one single box, right? So you'll actually have to hardwire a couple of APs to act as the uplink for those meshed access points. And I'll show you an example of that in the next slide. So if we take a look at this example, we have Ubiquiti's Unify system. Can you tell I really like Ubiquiti? Um, but Unify offers mesh Wi-Fi capability. So here we have our router our gateway. It's a separate device from our switch, which is also a separate device from our network controller. We have three access points here acting as uplink access points. They're actually hardwired into the network. They're the backbone of our mesh Wi-Fi system. But then we have an AP here, an AP here, an AP here, and an AP here that are wirelessly meshing to those uplink access points. And in this case, this access point right here is meshing to another wireless access point, which is then meshed to this uplink AP right here. So it's important to be aware that this is actually technically a partial mesh system. This is not a fully mesh system, and you're not going to see a fully mesh system in an enterprise environment because you need um, stability and reliability. And when you start adding hops like this, uh, you start to lose performance. Um, and we'll talk, we'll discuss that a little more, but just remember that the more hops that you have to make to get back to, you know, the uplink AP or the main system, the more performance you're going to lose. So this is a pretty popular example. And with a system like this, uh, the system will generally determine what the best uh, route for your data is to travel. So when you go to add this AP here to the system, it's going to know, oh, this uplink AP is closest. We'll mesh to that. And it's kind of a dynamic system like we talked about before. It can determine what the best path is. So some considerations. One, we just talked about it. Limit the number of hops for best perform performance. Unify actually states that you get a loss of up to 50% per hop when you're doing mesh Wi-Fi networking. And that's fairly accurate. So if you're doing two or three hops, you could lose like 80% of your performance um, and have really, really high latency. So uh, in the home environment, if you have to use three hops to get down to your basement where you're going to be playing some video games, your latency is going to be so high, you're probably not going to be able to play online. In the business environment, if you have important um, computers or devices relying on fast network access, if it's two or three hops away from a wired access point, that's going to be no good. Another consideration is the higher cost of entry. They're integrated systems, um, so they're going to be more expensive, and cheaper is not better in this case. You really want a robust system if you're going to be doing mesh Wi-Fi, so you're going to have to pay up. Um, and third, be aware of the language being used in the marketing materials. We discussed this with the Amplify Alien system. Words like mesh point 
router, and access point are often used interchangeably and it can be very confusing, especially if you have a little bit of technical know-how and you're like, wait a minute, why would I want two routers in my house? That doesn't make sense. And you're right, it doesn't. So you have to be aware that they are marketing these home systems to home users who wouldn't know any better. So again, do your research. And that is it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. I thought this was a good video to make because uh, I know I have a lot of first time networkers watching my channel and these basic concepts are important to grasp. So if you wanna hire me for consulting, there is a link down in the description to hire me for that. Or you can get your custom network build out from Unimesh. You can head over to getunimesh.com. That is my company uh, that specializes in building out custom Unify based networks. So we'll build it out, we'll source all the materials and we'll ship a fully customized and configured network right to your door. Other than that, there are Amazon links in the description to some of these systems. If you do want to buy one and you could use my link, that would be great. It's no additional cost to you and it helps out the channel. Other than that, leave the questions that you might have in the comments section. I will see them. I do look at my comments section and I enjoy interacting with you guys. So other than that, have a great day. I hope you found this helpful and uh, see you in the next one.